Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Uh, but I'm excited uh, today. Um, we're going to be starting, like I said, uh, a brand new series uh, called Summer Playlist. And I'm excited we're going to be preaching through some of our favorite verses um, that you've kind of shared with me. And if you haven't shared your verse yet with me, you still can. There's still time. The summer just started. So feel free to let me know your favorite verse. We might not get to them all because we actually do have a, a few that have come in. So if you haven't sent it in, please let me know um, what your favorite uh, verse is. Um, and I don't know if you've ever created like for yourself, like a playlist, like maybe like a road trip playlist or like a summer playlist with some of your favorite songs. You know what I'm talking about? And if you like, if, if you remember the old days when you would go on uh, LimeWire and you'd illegally download your songs and then you'd burn them onto a, uh, onto a, a CD, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah? And then you'd be like, why is, and then your parents would be like, why is the computer always broken? It's like, because there's a lot of viruses I downloaded from Napster. Like, and maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but that was the, the, the dream back in the day. And maybe even if you remember like making like a mixtape way back in the day, right? Maybe you have a summer mixtape, and you'd be, you know, cruising in your burnt CD with your mixtape, maybe in your car, you're listening to your favorite tunes with your friends, and it's like the summer vibes, and it's like an amazing, amazing time. And so that's kind of what we want to do, but not with songs, but with our favorite verses this summer. And so I'm excited to share um, some of our favorite verses, and so today I want to start with one of my favorite verses, because I want to, and I'm going to. And so when I was younger, uh, one of the only books I've ever finished, and I'm being completely honest, one of the only books I've ever finished is a biography um, on a guy named Sean Alexander, who was the running back for the Seattle Seahawks. It's like literally one of the only books I've ever writ, uh, read in my entire life. And yeah, like I got start a lot of books. Um, and then oftentimes they never get finished. You know what I'm talking about? And so, like, I'll listen to books a little better. But one of the only books I've ever read, like, cover to cover, finished it, closed it, was this biography on a guy named Sean Alexander. He was this running back again for the Seattle Seahawks. And in his book, he shares that when he got to the University of Alabama uh, to be the running back for the University of Alabama, he was challenged by one of the coaches on staff to read the Bible when he got there. And so he spent some time reading through the Bible, and he had yet to pick uh, his favorite, or he had yet to pick his number that he was going to wear through university and wear when he became a pro. He didn't know his number yet. And while he was reading uh, the scriptures, he got to Psalm 37. And when he was reading Psalm 37, uh, the verse that I'm going to share today is the verse that he saw, Psalm 37, verse 4. Uh, it says verse 3, but it's verse, but it's verse 4. That's my bad. But verse 4. And in this, and so what he did is he actually decided for the rest of his entire career that number 37 was going to be his number for the rest of his career. And he did wear this number 37 for the rest of his career. And this is the first time I kind of had seen this verse when I was younger. And, and it came out in this book that I read, which again is so random because I never read books. And it was a biography of all things, right? Like, anyway, so I read it and this verse kind of came up. And it's Psalm 37, verse 4. And this is what it says. It says, take the light in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Now this has become one of my favorite verses that I've kind of gone through in my entire life is just this verse of take delight in the Lord. Other uh, translations say delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so we want to uh, go through uh, this verse today and we're just going to kind of go kind of line by line, word by word. And so we're going to start with uh, the first thing which is take delight. Right, that's the first kind of thing that comes up is take delight. Now, what's the first thing that you think of when you hear the word delight? I'm going to be completely honest with you, and I'm not joking. The first thing I think of is Turkish delight. The first time. Because of the uh, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. That's like, and I don't even know what Turkish delight is. I'm being completely honest. I don't really know what it is. I've never had it. And maybe I did by accident. I don't know. But I, I don't even really know what it is. But the first thing I think of when I hear the word delight is Turkish delight from Edmund when he gets it and he eats it and he eats too much of it and it becomes a problem for him. Turkish delight. And that's what I think of every time I think of it. So when I read this verse, sometimes I start laughing. And then I have to think back, like, okay, it's not about Turkish delight. But delight is defined in two ways. And one would be to please someone greatly and the other would be, to uh, would be extreme pleasure or satisfaction. 
So that's really what this word delight means, is to please someone or to experience extreme pleasure or satisfaction. So the delight really has to do with pleasing someone with action or experiencing pleasure or satisfaction. And both of them have to do really with pleasure and contentment. So when we take delight in something, what we're doing is or we t- in something or someone, we're understanding the joy that they bring us or the thing that, that brings us joy, the thing that we experience contentment in is this word delight. And, and, and really how, really if we can find our delight in something, that's where all of our kind of joy or love or experience kind of comes through. And Jesus said this about treasure. Or, or what we have here on earth. And in some ways, it could also be this word delight. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20 to 21 says, Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rusts cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, this is it, there your, the desires of your heart will be also. Right? But I mean, this is the context really of treasure or money, but in the context of all of it, it's, it's the delight that we put in the things that will eventually get rusted, the things that eventually moths will come and destroy. Because everything on our, on our world, on this earth, is temporary. Everything. Like, like everything we own eventually is going to end up in a landfill or by the time they get rid of those, like in the recycling depot. Everything that we own, eventually your car is going to get rusty and old. Like eventually the things in the world are going to fall apart. And here Jesus is saying, wherever you put your treasure, wherever your delight is, that's where your desires are. Right? That's, that's literally it. And so where have you put your treasure? That's where you have put your delight. That's where your desires are, is where you've put your treasure, where you've put your delight. Are they in the heavenly places where nothing can destroy them? Or are they here on earth where something, maybe a, a, a storm's going to come or chaos is going to come and it's going to fall apart and then you're left with nothing? So a test that we can do when it comes to uh, our delight is I think there's some four questions we can kind of ask ourselves. And number one is, if you know where your delight is, is what do I spend the most time doing? Where do you spend most of that resource time? Because when you know what you, what you spend your time doing, that's when you know where your delight is, right? Where you spend the most time. The next question would be, where, how do you spend your money? Where do you spend your money? Because that really is going to show where your desires are. That's going to show where your delight is in the things and the stuff that you put your money towards. What are you investing in matters. And then also, what is bringing me the most uh, pleasure, what is it in my life that is actually bringing me the most joy and bringing me the most contentment? What is it in my life? And then the last thing is what is satisfying me? What in your life is actually bringing you the satisfaction or the purpose or the love that you have been looking for? What is it? Those are four questions we can ask ourselves as kind of a test on where our delight is, where our desires are. And I think for some of us, even for me, sometimes I think about those questions. I think, man, I'm not doing very well when it comes to my, where my delight is. I'm spending money or I'm, I'm spending my time doing things that are so irrelevant to, to life, but that's where I spend the majority of my time or my resources on the wrong things when our desire and our delight and our, our passion has to be about Jesus. Where is your delight? Where, where are you spending your time and where are you spending your money? Because we know our delight is, again, in where we spend time and what takes our money. We spend our most precious resources, our time and money on things that bring us the most pleasure and satisfaction. That's the truth. You know, the entertainment industry, it's, it's in the billions of how much money in the United States specifically is spent on entertainment every year. Billions and billions of dollars on, you know, movies or entertainment. We spend a lot of money on entertainment. And this is kind of this, the way that our life or our culture or the earth is going. I want to encourage you this week. So maybe spend some time going through these questions and say, okay, God, where is my delight? Where are my desires? What is it that I'm seeking? Am I seeking the right things? Am I seeking the wrong things? How can I make a shift in my life to spend the time doing the right things rather than spend my time doing the wrong things? How can I maybe change the way that I spend my money so that it can be more about you than it is about me? Because those are the things that are taking your attention and your affection is what you spend your time and money on. And then number two is the Lord, right? Take delight in who? In the Lord. Our delight and pleasure and satisfaction has to be in God. 
You know, when I think about my life, and maybe you can think about your life, some of the things that, the common places that we put our delight, some of the common places that we put our desire, right? Number one would be work. You know, work has become so important to us, which again, none of these things are bad, but if this is where our entire delight is or our entire desire is, you're gonna eventually be left with nothing. Work, you know, maybe you find the joy in what you do. You love your job and it brings you pleasure and it brings you contentment. You know, sometimes, to be honest, sometimes our desire or our attention, and rather than being in God, is actually just in the church. So what we do is we love to serve, which is amazing. We love to give. We like to be a part of what God is doing in church. Yes, but we can't just worship the church. We have to worship Jesus. Like, it, it, it's not about, you know, everything we do here. Yes, it's important, but Jesus is the point. Like, Jesus is why we serve. And some of us, we've got so caught up in what we do at the church that we started serving the church rather than serving Jesus. And I remember when I was younger, my, 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 dad would, my dad told me, him and my mom were talking. And they were talking about, you know, when they first started dating, their conversations were all about Jesus and what God was doing in Jesus. And, and then she, he said that slowly what shifted is that their conversation shifted from Jesus and shifted to the church. So they were talking more about the church than they were talking about actually what God was doing in their life. And so we can't let our delight or our desire be in the church. Yes, again, the church is a great thing and I love the church. I've given my life to the church. But it has to be more than just about the church. Maybe for us, it's, it's, it's our desire or our delight is in our spouse. We're so in love and they, they treat me the best and we have the best relationship. They could never make a TV show about us because we're perfect. Right? Like maybe that's where it is. Or maybe for you, it's your kids. And you're like, man, my kids get straight A's. And they're, they're the star on the basketball team. And check out my kids. Look at what they are doing. They're incredible. They're the best. And yes, your kids are probably amazing. But some of us are our, our desires and our investments. And we're like, man, look, look at the investment I made in Tesla and Bitcoin. Look at me. Is that where your desire is? Is that where your passion is? Maybe for you, it's in your house. You're so proud of your house. The one you've worked so hard to be in and you love to show it off, show off the changes, show off the, the demolition and show off everything you've done to make this house perfect. And yes, it's amazing, but that's not the point. Maybe it's your car. You're like, yeah, I got this car. It's got a twin turbo that's only found in the mountains of Nepal. I don't know anything about cars, okay? I don't even know what a twin turbo is. It seems like it's probably fast. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Nepal, sorry. When I wrote that, I was like, this is maybe not funny, but it's funny to me. <laughs> so I was like, Nepal, yeah. So are, are any of these things bad? No. Having a house is not wrong. Having, having a great spouse and having great kids and having a good car, there's nothing wrong with these things, right? Nothing wrong with them. But I think what sometimes starts to happen is that we start to delight ourselves in these things I know we've all had a moment where that faded away. Maybe you got in a car accident and your twin turbo from Nepal was gone. From zero to 16, 2.4 seconds. Now it's like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute. You're like on your pedal bike now. It's like five minutes, zero to 60, and you're going down a hill. None of these things are wrong. But in our culture, we've gotten so caught up in the things we can get and what we can attain and what we can control and what we can have, that our delight and our desire has become about those things. And then we wonder why we're struggling when things in our business aren't going well. We, we wonder why we're struggling when, when things in our marriages and with our kids aren't going well. Like, God, like, like why? And he's like, delight yourself in me. Delight yourself in me. I know students who would get straight A's and then one day they come home with the C and their, wor their world was shattered. It was the end of the, their world. It's like, I, I don't even know if I can keep going. It's like, I know it's hard, but it's not even about your education. It's about Jesus. Delight yourself in him. He is the one we have to put our desires in. And Paul wrote about something similar in, a, in, in, the, in the book of First Timothy. And we all know this part, but it says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. 
Now, of course, we're not just talking about money, but I think really the love of anything other than Jesus will bring all sorts of trouble into your life. If we, don't, if we delight ourselves in what we can accomplish or in what we can gather and what we can attain, it will cause many troubles and problems in our life, and you've probably noticed this. You know, money and cars and houses and investments and our spouse and children and work are all great things. They're great things for us to build and for us to, to, to try and achieve. And they're great things for us to try and create. And they're amazing things. But they can't be the only place you find joy. They can't be the only place that you put your, all of your energy and all, of, all that you are into. It can't be the only place. Delight yourself in the Lord and then delight yourself in everything else. The best relationships are those where we delight ourselves in Jesus first and then we spend time in our relationship. The stronger relationship that you're going to have is really how intimate you are with Jesus outside of even that circle. We can't base our entire relationship with Jesus on what our spouse thinks or what their relationship is. You're going to burn out. You're going to eventually just burn out and be like, I can't even keep going. We have to delight ourselves in the Lord. Pursue Jesus first. Where is your delight right now? Have you ever noticed that when things are going well and your business and your family and work are going well, something always seems to come up and ruin it? Right? It's like, man, look at this. I got the promotion. And then all of a sudden your car's like, see ya. Engine seized. You're like, I changed my oil four, four years ago. What's the problem? Right? I'm just joking. My friends like that. It's like, stop, man. It's like a rock in there. But when things are going well, oftentimes, we all know this, something always comes up that we did not expect and it seems to ruin everything. Something that rocks our faith and shakes our entire world and we don't know what to do. We've all had moments like that. And I remember when we were in Calgary, just before we moved here, we were, things were going really well. You know, you know we were, we were uh, building an incredible ministry. We were part of an incredible church. We had incredible friends and we just bought our house and we, we just had our first baby and things were going well. You know, things were like really an all-time high. There was challenges, of course. But then God started to speak to us. We heard the whisper, your time here is done. Something that really just came and kind of shook us. We're like, God, like, things are finally going good, man. Like, we finally got everything that we've desired. And he's like, there's more for you. There's something bigger for you. There's something deeper for you. And we had to really have a step of faith and say, God, I know that you want us to go, but it's like, right now it's so comfortable, it's so easy, it's become so normal. It's like, I got more for you. And I think for me, it really opened my eyes, even with this verse of, man, sometimes my desire and my delight is in the wrong things. Sometimes my desire and my delight is in the wrong things, so that way when Jesus calls us, sometimes it's hard to say yes because we're like, I'm good. I got everything I prayed for already. I'm not praying right now. I'm good. And God's like, no, I got more for you. And that's when we know where our desire is, where our delight is. Why? Because when we say yes to Jesus, it's going to shake things up. It's going to move us. It's going to change things in our life. There's a reality check for me. Where is my delight? And I ask you that question again. Where is your delight? Is it in what you have built or is it in who you serve? Because again, I think we can tell where our delight is based on how we respond to the call in front of us. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, it's going to open up doors we never thought could be open. And it's going to take us places we never even dreamed or imagined of. And for some of us, that's actually a scary place. And then the last part of this verse is this, verse, this part here. The light, take delight in the Lord and he will give you what? The desires of your heart. Your heart's desires. And when we find our pleasure and our satisfaction in the right things, our desires change. Have you noticed that? The things that you wanted maybe 20 years ago are very different than what you want now. I look back at my life when I was, when I was younger, and my, my desires are very different. When I was like 18, my desires was like make as much money as I can and travel the world and get married and 
you know, like, like have a great relationship. Like that, that was it. And like, those are good things. But it was all about me. All my desires literally were about me and my, my pleasure, my satisfaction, what I want, not what anyone else wants. I'm going to work as hard as I can to build something amazing. And that was my desires. But now my desires are so different. You know, my, my desires now is to really just serve Jesus with all that I am. Sacrifice all that I can to serve Jesus with all that I can to serve and build a healthy and thriving church. That's my desires, that God will use us, this church, to reach our city and bring Jesus into the places where people desperately need him. Like, that's my desires, to fill heaven and rob hell, right? That's what I want to see. It's not about me anymore. It's not, a, it's not about what I want my desires have changed the closer I've gotten to Jesus the more my desires have changed it's like I don't care if I drive a nice car and that's partially just who I am like I drive a 2002 Honda Odyssey and I love it and I see people driving around cars that are worth more than my house and I think nice you know like like that's amazing like get a car but my desires have become so much more about the kingdom and so much more about Jesus and, and building and helping my kids grow to serve Jesus and teaching them how to love and teaching them how to serve and teaching them how to follow Jesus properly. Like that's my desires in my life now. It's not about me anymore. And I've delighted myself in the Lord and my desires have changed. I think for all of us, we get to a point in life where we get tired of the grind. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. The constant stress and pressure of work. We're exhausted. The pressure from the world. And we're doing our best and we're using all the energy that we have to build something on earth and we're tired of just grinding and, and, and the hustle. We're tired of keeping going and going every day. It feels like more and more of a challenge to even just get out of bed because we're so just tired. We're rushing to every appointment and we're rushing to work and we're rushing home and we're struggling to keep up and we're striving for our desires and striving for our dreams to come true. But the more we strive, we, the less we feel like we're thriving. We feel like we're just going through the motions and the dreams we have inside of us, the desires are not becoming a reality even though we're working so hard. I can't be the only one who's felt this way, who feels this way sometimes. We're tired. We're rushing everywhere we can, striving, and we're not seeing the results. We're working harder than ever, and the fruit seems to be limited and bitter. You know what I think we forget to do? For some of us, we, working hard is not the problem. The problem for some of us is trusting that God's going to take care of us. The problem for some of us is resting, delighting ourselves in him, I think we forget to trust in the Lord. I think we forget to delight ourselves in the Lord because we're so constantly worried about what's happening that we forget to allow Jesus into the picture. We forget. And maybe you're tired of this grind, the, the, the culture, and we're tired of it, tired of the constant pursuit of more. I want to read this verse from Isaiah. Isaiah 40, verse 31. This is what it says. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. And they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Some of us, we forgot that that was in the Bible. We've, we've read it. Like, it's not like this is a new verse. Like, we, we know it's there. But how many times do we forget? When we delight ourselves, ourselves in everything other than the Lord, you know what happens? We get exhausted. We're trying to keep up. We're trying to strive. We're trying to work as hard as we can. And yes, working hard is good. But eventually, you got to take a moment to trust in the Lord. And then what will happen? You will find new strength. Some of us, we're still working on the strength that we had 20 years ago. And we've never been renewed of it. And we're like, why am I so exhausted? It's because we haven't trusted God with our future yet. We haven't trusted him with, with, with what's coming next anymore. We're tired. It, was, it says we will soar on wings like eagles. You know, some of us are more like hummingbirds. You ever seen a hummingbird? They like float. They're, the wings flap so fast. I researched it. 
Their wings, I'm not joking you, they flap 10 to 15 times a second. 10 to 15 times a second. And some of us, that's what our life is like. We're like little hummingbirds flapping our wings as hard as we can and we're barely going anywhere. It says we're gonna soar on wings like eagles. You ever watch an eagle fly? Not like on TV, but like in real life. Ever seen an eagle fly and soar? They don't flap their wings very much. You know, they did a study on a bald eagle named Cindy, which is a hilarious name for a bald eagle to me, but Cindy. And while they studied her, they found that she averaged less than two minutes per hour flapping her wings on average. Some of us were so busy and so stressed and we're so, so caught up in what's happening. We're like hummingbirds just flapping our wings. We're not going anywhere. And God's like, no, it's time for you to soar like an eagle. And soar like an eagle is not about success. What it's about is rest. To be able to just stand there with our arms, our, our wings out, and we're just flying and we're soaring. We don't have to work hard. Why? Because that's where Jesus takes us to the places where we can find rest. When we delight ourselves in the Lord, we're going to find the rest our souls desperately need. I think it's time to rest. It's time to delight in the right things. To stop flapping our wings so much and striving and just trying to hustle and the grind and we're tired and we're like, I gotta keep going because if I don't, it's time for us to learn to soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's what we need. And this is really what delighting in ourselves in the Lord is saying, God, I trust you. Help me find the new strength that you promise. Help me find the rest that you promise. Delight. Help me delight myself in you. I want to read that verse again, Psalm 37, verse 4. It says verse 3, but it's verse 4, I promise. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Now, this is such a simple verse, but really, again, we go down to the bottom of it. Delight in the Lord. Give him your attention. Give him your affection. Give him your worship. Give him your business. Give him your family. Give him your kids. Give him your work. Give him your church. Give him your home. Give him your car. Give it to him. That joy the joy of the Lord will be our strength, right? And it's really just delight yourself. Give him all that you are. Give him your affection. And then he will give you the desires of your heart. And you're going to notice that those desires change. And this verse is literally our takeaway. It's the same the takeaway as the verse. Take delight in the Lord. And he will give you your heart's desires. You know, this has been my favorite verse. It's really helped me go through some hard moments where you don't know what's going to happen. And we say, God, now I trust you. Renew my strength. I delight myself in you. So I want to encourage you. Let's, let's this week do a test. Like where is, where is your delight this week? Where is it? Is it in the wrong things? Because some of the things that you put your delight in, like Edmund, is the wrong things. Turkish delight. It's going to hurt your stomach. But trust God. Give him all that you want. I want to encourage you to have those conversations this week.